Hello everybody. Today I've got a new program I want to show off really quick. Uh, this one is a little bit different from anything I've done before. This time I wanted to try and t take a crack at an encryption algorithm. Now this is nothing mind-boggling. It's definitely not better than some of the modern encryption algorithms we use throughout the internet. Uh, but it does kind of help demonstrate the principles behind it, in my opinion. Um, my core concept behind this was I wanted to have a random encryption algorithm, something that was different each time. And as I actually researched some of the encryption algorithms that are used today, like AES, RSA, things like that, I realized uh, they actually already use some randomness. Um, uh, not hashing. Hashing does not. If you know anything about that. Uh, it has to be the same output every time, but other encryption algorithms will include randomness in their encryptive methods. So this is not a unique idea by any means, but uh, I did think it would be interesting to see what I could do on my own with just a quick little Python program. So first I will, once again, as usual, demonstrate how it works, and then we'll go through the line code by the code step by step. Um, and before we begin, I'd just like to say that Along with all my other projects, this one will be linked down in the description. There's a link to a Google Drive folder where I keep all of my projects so that anybody can check them out. All right, with that, let's begin. So we'll skip over this and look at it later. Uh, down here are the actual calls. Now I have a couple of different ones to demonstrate how it works. Uh, ignore these bottom ones for now. We're gonna start with these top ones. I've put in a lot of pre-inputs uh, here, so it's going to do it automatically. Um, we're gonna do level 10 encryption. The, the message we're going to encrypt is this string here. This is, this is a test message. And I said file out is true. So that's because this program has the ability to write out to a file so that you don't have to copy and paste everything yourself. So this first line is gonna run and then we're gonna run into an error here because I haven't filled these in yet. So uh, we should scroll up and see, yep, outputs written to files. So if we go to my file explorer here, you'll see we've got encrypted encryption key and encrypted data. So that message has been encrypted as the string of numbers here. And we can't know what that says without knowing the encryption key here. So we're going to put those in here. So we'll take this encrypted data, copy it and paste it there. And then the key, we will take this data here, copy it here, paste it here. Now, once again, this stuff down here is gonna do some things. We're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna see if this using this key and the encrypted data can get back our message. So if we run this again, you can see the decrypted data is, this is a test message. So you can see we've successfully encrypted our message as this long string of numbers and this key of math operations. And you'll see why I chose to go that route in a second. Um, so with that out of the way, we're just going to comment out these lines really quick because we will not be needing them anymore. So I showed you how to do that with some of these uh, previous inputs, but you can also simply just say, hey, I want to encrypt with this level, and then I just want to decrypt something. And so you'll see here, when I do this, instead of like trying to do everything automatically, it says, well, just give me what you want to encrypt. So here we can say, test message two. And then it will say, okay, here's your encrypted data, here's your decryption key. And then of course, since I've called the decrypt function, it's asking, hey, what data do you want to decrypt? So in this case, we can copy our encrypted data again, paste it there. And it says, well, what's the key to decrypt it? We take this, copy it and paste it, hit enter, and behold, we have test message two. So once again, we've successfully showed that we can encrypt a message as a long string of numbers and then decrypt it with some math operations. Um, now, this last one I want to show is just a quick one showing how big this can get. So real quick, I have some lines commented out up here. These, I'm just going to use, uh, these just basically say, hey, instead of me having to manually copy and paste those things like I did down here, it's just gonna automatically take whatever's generated and put it in the decryption function. So instead of me copying and pasting it, it's just going to automatically copy and paste it for me. Um, now you can see we're doing encryption level 199, uh, and that's a lot bigger. So you'll see that some of the outputs are gonna be pretty big. So we're actually gonna start with a fairly small message. How about just hello? Uh, you can see we've got a lot of stuff here. So our encrypted data isn't too big. It's just a little bit of a string of numbers. But for every single level of encryption that you include with this program, it adds another math operation. So there's 199 parentheses here. And the reason I chose that number is because Python by default has a setting where if you nest 200 parentheses, it will throw an error. So we can just, we can modify that in the settings if we want. 
However, I didn't want to cause any issues. And so I just decided to leave it as is and stick with 199 is the limit. And you'll actually see later that if you try and pass any number greater than 199, it'll just cap it at that number. So you can see our key to decrypt this little string is really, really long, but it did work. We decrypted the data successfully back to our original message, but it gets longer the more you want to encrypt it and the longer your message is. So if we run this again, but instead of a short message, we say, this is a longer message, which has a long string of characters. We get about the same length of a key, but now you can see our encrypted data is significantly longer. Um, now this used to be a lot worse. And before I go on to showing you how this works step by step, I want to illustrate how much worse it was. So I copy this over to a Word document, and this Word document tends to lag out my computer. You can see here there's 2,400 pages in this Word document. That's because I tried using five paragraphs of lorem ipsum text. And you can see that input here. We've got, it's about eight pages. Um, so that I put into encrypt, and here's the output. It took a while to calculate, which is why I didn't want to do this while recording. It took several minutes. Um, and you can see the output. Uh, obviously, you don't want to check if that's identical by hand. So I just tossed it into this uh, website here. And you can see, you might be able to see right there, it says the two files are identical. So the input and output did match. It was exactly the same. And But here's the issue. This string of text was the encrypted data, all of these numbers. and. Obviously, with the program I've created, the security is random. It does seem like it should be secure, but you're taking up significant amounts of space with your encrypted data and with the key to decrypt it. And so this is not a space efficient program. I mean, you can see, I believe that this, uh, this encrypted data was about 32 pages long. Uh, oh, maybe not quite that bad. Oh, no, it is. It's about 20 pages, actually, if you take away the 16 for the input and outputs. But here's where it gets insane. The 2,000 pages comes from the key. And I'll explain why that was in a little bit. But yeah, this entire key, you can see I did it with a level 199 encryption, which is why there's 199 open parentheses. And then there's 199 math operations, which use these massive numbers, and it just goes. And uh, I have a little bookmark so we can skip to the bottom. Um, but yeah, here we are on page 2,442. And that is the entire math operation to decrypt it. Uh, so you can imagine why that took so long for the Python program to calculate those massive numbers. Um, now, luckily, we're not going to have any outputs like that anymore, and that's because of these lines here, which I will get to in just a second. But uh, with that, let's move on to how the program actually works. So starting off, we define some lists, and these are our math operations that we can use in our, uh, in our encryption. So encryption really is just math, because data is really just numbers. Um, so anything that you can store as data can also be stored as numbers, which is why our encrypted data I leave as just a string of numbers at the end. So any amount of numbers, we can just do some math on. So you can see we do we can multiply the number by another number, which we'll call x. We could add a random number, subtract a number. We could add a different random number or subtract a random number. And I'll explain why those are different, why we have an x and a z later. Um, but then I include this reverse operation string. And this is important for creating the decryption key. So every operation that we, knew, that we do to the data, we need to be able to undo as well. So with multiplying it by a number, we can also floor divide it by that number. And it has to be floor division. Otherwise, we get some funky decimal stuff and our data actually gets modified in the process. So floor division works, but that's also why we can't divide as our first step. Um, adding and subtracting our opposites, subtracting and adding our opposites, you see how it works. So these are pretty basic operations. There's literally just adding, subtracting, and an occasional multiplying. And I tried some other operations, but these ones are what either cause massive amounts of storage to be required, like you saw in that Word document. Um, for example, this plus Y and minus Y, those were huge contributors to why that Word document got so big. Once again, I'll explain why we use the difference between X, Y, and Z later. Um, and that will kind of help to explain. And I had a couple of ideas like multiplying to a power, but then you'd have to import the math library to use a logarithm. And I didn't want to do that because um, the way that the, the operation gets applied uses the eval function. And I would have to modify the entire structure of the code to make this work. Another idea I had was replacing or modifying a single digit, um, but I didn't want to spend extra time trying to figure that out when the function worked as it, is, as, as, as it does currently. So first we have this encryption function. 
as I explained before, we just kind of make sure that all the inputs are correct. So if somebody puts in like a negative or a zero level of uh, encryption, we just set that to one as the minimum and the maximum is 199. And then we have these uh, optional parameters such as data or file out, and those can be set or they can just be ignored like I showed in the demonstration. Um, and this just gets your information. So the first step is we have this data. It's just raw data, it's a string of characters. Uh, and first we need to encode it into numbers because you can't do math operations on the letter A, for example. So basically I take each character in the data and I turn it into its ASCII numeric value. So ASCII is just a different format for data. So instead of having like the letter A, you have a number that represents the letter A that can be looked up in ASCII table. Um, then we take that, turn it into a string, and then we have to fill it. We have to do Z fill, which adds zeros to the beginning of it so that it's three, uh, three numbers long always. Because if you have a number like 99 in ASCII, that's technically 099. But if you do that, it's going to just drop the zero and that causes issues when we try and decrypt it later. So we add the zeros and then we turn it to a string. And now we have this encoded data uh, string that has all of the data turned into numbers. Now that's not encrypted yet. It's just encoded because it's not secret. Anybody can decode ASCII. It's public. Everyone knows how that works. You can just look it up and decode it. So encrypted data means that you have to have a key to figure out how to decrypt the data. So now we start with this as the encoded data, but now we need to actually encrypt the data. And as we encrypt it, we're gonna generate the key as well. So we start with a blank key and we start with a list of what are gonna be the reverse functions that we use. And that's because we have to do them reverse. So then we have this for loop, and this is just saying apply a level of encryption for each level that they set. Now here's where I'll explain the X, Y, and Z. So X, is basically representative of a small integer, one to nine. Uh, so anywhere between one and nine. Uh, and that works for like multiplying or you can just add or subtract a small number. That just works because you don't wanna multiply by a huge number or you're gonna get huge amounts of data in the end. So X is just a small number that we can use. Now Y is a number between one and the absolute value of whatever our data is as a number. So you can see our data can get pretty big down here. And so if we're multiplying by a number this large, that's why we had issues earlier with the primitive program that I used with these experimental and advanced operations. I commented them out just to keep them there, but they don't work in practice because it's just impractical. So I decided to, I don't actually think I used Y at all. I did use Z, but um, Y is not used, but I don't wanna just leave it out, so it's there. Z is a number between zero and the length of the data itself. So that, however many characters are in here, um, uh, it's probably maybe 100, 150, I don't know exactly. But the length of here, the length of this string is what that represents. So it can be any number between there. And so you can see I use that in like this hypothetical operation where we just edit a digit because it allows us to single out a digit that we know is within the length of the data. So basically we start by randomly generating some numbers that we can use and we have a general idea based on the variable name, how big they are. Then we say, pick a random operation. So it goes to this list and says, pick a random operation. And it says, take the encrypted data, uh, which right now is just encoded. And then it says, apply that operation to it and then evaluate it. So we're basically doing that math operation. So even though these math operations are strings right now, using this eval function, we can say, apply that to the string. And then we say, take the reverse operation of whatever you just did. Um, and in this case, we have to replace X with whatever number we did because we randomly generated it. And if we don't keep that here, it'll get lost and it'll go out of frame. So we have to say, take whatever the reverse operation is, insert the number that it should be, and then add it to this reverses list that we made up here. So at this point, after this for loop finishes, the data has been encrypted and we've created a list of reverse operations. But instead of a list of reverse operations, we just want a string that we can store. So then we go through the list backwards because we want to apply the operations in reverse order. And we say, start with a parenthesis, add whatever the key is, and then the operation, and then end the parenthesis. And you'll see why it has to be in this format in a little bit when we get to the decryption algorithm. But this is very important that we start always 
with an open parenthesis and then go on to these. So now we just have some outputs. It basically checks, is the file being outputted uh, to an actual file? If it is, just write it out to these files and then let the user know that they have. Otherwise, you can just print their data to the terminal. So that's how it, the encryption works and how it generates the encrypted data and the key. So the decryption function takes in a data and a key. And then once again, if you don't apply those at all, it'll just ask you for them and you can just paste them in. And now here's how we start to decrypt the data. So we go through each thing within the key. Um, and we have to find, so we have to evaluate the key as a math operation. So we're once again going to use this eval operator. But the problem is right now, when you look at this key, it's literally just a bunch of numbers in parentheses. So we need to start with the actual data. And so we use this, we're searching th through the key for all these open parentheses. And we're basically saying, go to the spot where there isn't an open parenthesis. So it'll start at the beginning here and go open parentheses. It's looking through all of them. And eventually it hits here and it says, oh, this next symbol's a minus. It's not an open parenthesis. So what you're gonna do right there is you're gonna say, insert this string right there. And so it's taking our data, it's taking the encrypted variable, turning it into an integer and inserting it right there. And then it's saying, evaluate all of that. So it basically puts a giant number right here between this open parenthesis and this minus four, and then does all of this math on that number. And this math is just the reverse math of what we did when we encrypted it. And so that is going to give us back our original encoded data. Now remember, it's still encoded. It's ASCII numeric right now. Um, it hasn't been transformed into letters and numbers. So then once again, we have to check that there are that there need to be zeros at the beginning because whenever we convert it to an integer it's going to lose any trailing zeros so we just check is it multiplied by three or is it divisible by three and add zeros until it is and that's once again why we needed to keep all of those numbers exactly three characters long is so that we know which characters are the same because for example if you had a one and a one versus an 11 you can't distinguish between those unless you tell for certain hey every single thing has three characters then it would be either 001 or 011, and you'd be able to distinguish between one and 11. So now that we've had, we have our encoded data, we just go through each three, every three digits in the encoded data and say, take those three digits, turn it into an integer, then turn it into the character form of that ASCII numeric value, and then turn it into a string and then add it to the data. So it's a little bit of a bit of chaotic mess, uh, but eventually it puts it into the data and then it works. So that is how those functions work. They're a little messy. They're a little computational heavy. They're definitely not storage friendly. So like I said, this isn't a mind boggling, super smooth and clean encryption algorithm. It's just kind of a demonstrative, quick little Python program to show how the basics of encryption work and how it's math based and how all of these things kind of come together. And obviously, you know, the encryption that is used in the real world is significantly more complicated than just multiplying and adding numbers to things. But this kind of gives you an idea of, hey, if you have, if you've intercepted this data, let's say it's sensitive information, you cannot crack this without knowing the key. And then obviously there's this whole idea of you need to be able to securely transmit the key and stuff like that. But like I said, this is just a basic introduction of how this kind of concept works. So once again, we want to avoid things like this because storing that is a nightmare. Um, but other than that, I think it is a cool program. And I think what it demonstrates is even cooler. And if you learn something from this, then that's all I could hope for. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, definitely check out my other ones if you did. I like to make like just super random things uh, especially Python. I've been recently getting to C++. I haven't made any projects in that yet, but uh, if I become more proficient in it and have a good idea for one, maybe I will. But uh, thanks for watching. And uh, again, check the description if you would like to download this project and try it for yourself. Um, hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for everything.